Hello everybody, I'm getting on with some more flower seed sowing today um, and these were the ones that I set out at the start of this month and we're nearly at the end of it and I'm only just sowing them but that's down to the weather and although it's absolutely glorious sunshine today and it's absolutely gorgeous so I can come out here and sow outside which is wonderful it's still very cold at night and you've got to watch those temperatures where you're going to put your plants at night when they're ready so I've delayed until right now We've got a week of cold weather coming, but that's okay because most of these will be protected. And by the time they're emerging, the overnight temperatures, not next week, the week after, are rising slightly. So we're getting away from the frost zone. So I think today is an ideal time for me to get going on these. First one I've got is three Rubecchias, Gloriosa Daisy, Daisies, Aries, and what was the other one? Um, can't think now. Marmalade, that's marmalade. So I've got those three, and what I'm going to do is sow them in these module trays, these ones from container-wise, and I'm just going to put one, or possibly two, in each cell, depending on how heavy-handed I am. So I'm going to aim for one in each cell, and I'm going to use basically the whole packet up. Now I'm sowing onto the surface of the soil here, they need a light to germinate. So you've got to be careful of a couple of things. You've got to be careful of the watering and the water from underneath so that you don't disturb those. You've got to make sure that the seeds are in contact with the soil. You've got to put a propagator lid on them because the surface is sown. You want that humidity all around the seed. And these want quite a bit of heat as well. If you can't give them heat, they will still grow. They'll just be much slower to germinate. The ideal temperature is around 23, 24 degrees, I think, on those. So these will go on my heat mat. I'm not even gonna water them now. I'll water them when I get home because they're going in the van to go home. Um, but something like this behind me which is a little tank I use for watering from underneath and that will just keep the moisture there and you just put them in until you just see the tops getting wet then you know you've got wet underneath propagator lid on put them on a heat mat or in a propagator or wherever else you can to, to, to get them warm but they need light and they need warmth uh, if you can't give them either of those opt for giving them the light and allow time to germinate them as opposed to putting them on a propagator so that's that first one and that was the gloriosa the next one is aries and it's the same thing exactly the same thing with all these varieties so i'll probably cut there and come back when they're done now i've got two more trays of the container wise 40 cells trays here the shallow ones and what I'm sowing now are carnations all three of these are carnations and these seeds aren't as old as the Rebecca that I just sowed a minute ago so where I was putting a pinch of them seeds on to use them up and for better germination I'll weed out the rubbishy ones and just leave one in the cell I want to be a bit more careful with this I just want one or two seeds in each cell here because these, I only got these seeds last year, so they're not that old. So I think I'll do better with just a couple. And again, carnations, they, they want to be on the surface of the soil. So I want to water them from underneath, and these ones heat again, so these will go on the propagator and they want the all-round humidity because the surface sown again so again another propagator lid on top and i think that'll do for that one so again i'll bring you back when we're done and we're getting on with the next one as i say i've got a lot to cover today a lot to sow and I'll put all the varieties up as I'm, as I'm sowing them. Now, the next one for me is Cosmos, and 
you know, these are great plants, really are. I mean, it's the first one, it's a Sarah Raven one, and it's bright lights. And I've just got some tr trays of sieved compost, and I'm just going to chuck these seeds at it and just try and spread them around a little bit. Uh, I'll cover these with a little bit of compost. And then as they start growing, when they're big enough, I'll prick them out and put them into individual modules. Again, a lot of these are old seeds. I mean, this is 2020, so by date, so they're a couple of years out of date. But I'll not let that phase me. What that just means is that they're, um, the germination rate won't be as good as perhaps a fresh seed would be. So again, this one is, which one's this? Sensation Mixed. And Cosmos are a great border filler because if you get the conditions right, especially if we get a hot, dry summer, these things will grow phenomenally large. They can go up to six foot. And that's that one, the Sensation Mixed. And as long as you keep deadheading them, they'll just keep flowering and flowering all the way through, right the way through until October. And um, yeah, just marvellous plants. And they're, they're a great border filler. You can pop them at the back of a border, pop them at the end of a row of plants, wherever you want. And again, I'm trying to work my way through my seed, seed collection and use up old seeds so that I can buy all new fresh for next year. So I'm overdoing it on the seed sowing and eventually I will just give them away if I've got far too many, which hopefully I will have. And that's that one there, the Piketty. And now on to one of my favourites. This is Cosmos, but this one is Purity and it's an all white flower and it's absolutely stunning. And if you put this one at the back of the border, as I say, it'll easily grow five or six foot tall. But that white flower, the white in a garden, makes a garden look bigger. So if you put a couple of these at the back of a flower border somewhere, it makes it look bigger than it actually is. Makes it look deeper, makes your garden look deeper. So I absolutely adore this one, really do. The only problem with growing it at the back of a border is you've got to get in there to deadhead it, which can be an issue in itself. So that's that one, and then the last one here is Dazzler. And this is another one that came as a recommendation. I mean, I bought this seed from Premier Seeds, but I first heard of it through Sarah Raven. I bought some of her seed many years ago. And again, just blasting loads of seeds at it and don't need that many plants but we've got them <laughs> so they also will they'll get covered in compost they don't particularly need the light um, they'll get watered from below when I get home because the surface zone or fairly close to the surface I don't want them floating off and they'll go on the propagator. They won't need so much heat as the Rubecchias and the Carnations that I did, but anywhere between 15 and 20 degrees is more than fine for them. So that's them, and then we move on. We seem really getting through them today. So now we get to the first of the real heat-loving plants, um, apart from tomatoes and things I sowed earlier. This lot is dahlias. Now, you've got to be careful when you're buying seeds for dahlias as to what you want to use them for. Bedding dahlias are numerous, and if you look up dahlia seeds, the majority that you find will be for bedding plants. And they'll grow to a good size, but they're not really good enough, I think, for a cut flower to go in a vase, which is predominantly what I'm growing flowers for. I do grow them for other uses, but I want cut flowers. So this one is a giant hybrid mixed and all of these were checked thoroughly before I bought the seeds so that I know they'll get to a good size for cutting for flowers and again I'm just going to sow these on the surface of some compost and I'll, I will cover with a little bit I will cover with a little bit of uh, compost 
water them, but they want to be kept warm. So I'll put a propagator lid on this just to keep the warmth in there and they'll go into my propagator at home. So that's the giant hybrids mixed. The next one is a cactus mixed. Uh, so a sort of a sharp pointy flower, but it, it lends itself to a good contrast to a, a vase of, of flowers or whatever you've got. Also the whole packet. And again, I will prick these out at a later date when they're of a good enough size to handle. Just prick them out and put them into pots. They are strong feeders. Uh, you'll need a lot good ground to put them in. Good strong soil, you know, even some manure or compost underneath them. And this is the last one. This is the showpiece mix. This is this one. Again, I know these go up to about a metre in size, the plants. So we should be able to manage to get some good stems from them. Now, I will show you later in the season as I'm growing these, there's a way of pruning these to promote bigger flowers, longer stems, to increase your yield. So that's, that will all come later. There's no point me telling you about it now. But for the moment, these need wetting, which I'll do when I get home. And they need lots of warmth and they should come through. At the end of the season, you'll be able to dig these up and you'll have tubers that'll look like a little hand like this when you pull them out of the soil, protect them over winter, grow them again next year. So you get to keep them. So that's the, you know, the best thing about them. So I'll just cover them with a bit of compost and that's three different types of dahlias done, loads of plants. You can see I'm getting through these trays fairly quickly this morning, um, but I'm gonna have absolutely tons and tons of flowers from them. Right, the final two uh, trays that I'm sowing, again into the container-wise 40 cell shallow trays, Ozzinias. <laughs> These are definitely warm weather plants. So basically grow them the same as, as the dahlias. So they want heat, they want a bit of compost over their heads and they want to propagate a lid as well. They're gonna need as much heat as you can give them really. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a clue in the name. This one is called Old. I oh, know this one's California Giant Mix and this one's Old Mexico. Both warm weather areas. So that should give you a clue as to the sort of heat they're gonna need. And it can be a bit hit and miss growing zinnias. If we get a dull summer, it can be difficult. If you've got a nice sheltered plot, then you'll get away with it nice and easy. So again, that's it, nice and simple. I'm just pressing them into contact with the soil and I'll put a little bit of compost over the top. The same with this one, as a picture of this one, the old Mexico, so there we go. Lovely, and I'll sow that, cover them, and that's all, all the sowing I'm doing today. There's more to come, but this is it for this video. Now, with all gardening, knowledge is of course king. And if you can learn a bit more about your plants, if you can find out where they come from, for instance, like those zinnias that we just sowed a few minutes ago, the clue was in the name Californian Giants and Old Mexico, both hot weather areas, so that you know that they're hot weather plants. But if you can go one step further than that and learn where they actually come from, where they originated from, with all your plants that you're growing in the garden, you'll be far better armed to grow them yourself and to work out where you need to grow them without going and asking somebody questions. You can build upon that knowledge. And the back of the seed packet will often give you clues for these things. For instance, it might say um, it needs light to germinate. So you know not to cover the seeds. You put the seeds on the top, press them lightly into the compost, and then you water from underneath because you don't want to dislodge the, the loose seed on the top and put a propagator lid on because you want the humidity all the way around that seed. So that's a given with that. So if you can interpret the instructions on a seed packet, if you can have a little bit of knowledge about the plant, just go and look them up and, and find out. I mean, the RHS site is a good place to go and look for them. Then you're 
arming yourself and making yourself that much more um, knowledgeable about the seeds. So do check those things out and you will find that with, especially with flower seeds, if you're a veg grower starting to grow flower seeds now, you'll notice that many flower seeds grow just on the surface of the compost. So you're going to need a lot of those lids. Not necessarily so with, um, with you, you know, your average vegetables. I grow both. I grow everything and anything, whatever I can with whatever conditions I've got, I'll, I will grow it just because I like growing stuff. But yeah, if you just interpret the information that's on the back of the packet, look at the timings, look at what sort of heat it needs and where you can gather that heat. If it says that it needs 20 degrees to germinate, that's the ideal temperature. But it doesn't mean you have to germinate them at 20 degrees. You can germinate them at 16 degrees. It just means it will take a little bit longer because you're not at the ideal temperature. So you can still get away with these things. You know, things like growing on a windowsill can give you lovely temperatures during the day and it won't be too cold at night, so that's an ideal location. So it's surprising what you can get away from, get away with, if you interpret the instructions to fit the conditions that you've got. And just because it says it needs 25 degrees, as I say, you don't have to physically provide it though a lot of the time it will help. But I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you haven't just skipped to this end bit. I hope you've watched all of that to see the, the seeds that I'm sowing. There's so many more to come. I can't really show all of them on video. It just becomes boring. So I'm going to cut it at the end of this month. Um, uh, what I have been doing is I've had a playlist for February and for March and trying to show as much as I possibly can. With everything that I've sown and got going now at the, at the minute, I will still continue to show them being potted on as normal, but making a dedicated playlist for April, um, I won't be doing this time. I just think it's, it's enough and I don't want to become known for just doing this one thing, you know? I want to be getting on and doing other things as well. I will show everything. You know, you'll see everything that, that gets done. It just won't be in a dedicated, playlist but for now look after yourselves everyone please stay safe i'll see you all very very soon toronto